Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with Golden Opportunities Coaching and the uh, Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. Of course, this is Pro Wrestling Logic. This is the SmackDown Report for the uh, two th um, February 25th edition of SmackDown. Opening with a Ronda Rousey segment. Michael Cole is already in the ring, introduces Ronda. She gets a huge reaction from the fans. Uh, they break into a chant for her. She points out that she broke her hand in the last WrestleMania match and also added that... Uh, she took time off and broke the other hand during the time off. She gave birth to her uh, child, and then she mentioned her mother returned after giving birth and wanted to do the same thing for her daughter. Uh, Cole runs down her accomplishments, including being the first woman to main event UFC, first woman inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame, and the various championships she held in wrestling. Cole also notes Rousey's in the ring with Flair last Saturday mentioned that she... Had problems dealing with Sonya Deville, but Flair was a different story. They showed highlights of Flair beating down Rousey in Elimination Chamber. Cole pushed that Rousey had one arm tied behind her back. Charlotte then interrupts and made her way down the aisle. Flair promises that, in fact, uh, she'd beat Rousey and force her to tap at WrestleMania. She added that the good news is Rousey gets to work on baby number two. Suddenly, Deville jumps Rousey from behind. Nails her with a chop block, and then Rousey recovers quickly and throws Deville out of the ring. Uh, in the back, New Day drive around on an ATV. I mean, I'm not opposed to this. I don't know that the Sonya Deville character needs... The, the heel Sonya Deville character doesn't really need to be here, but I get why they do it, because they don't have creativity really at, at their hands. Back to the break, Adam Pearson and Deville uh, walked in for the previous segment. They're pretty... Um, uh, you know, and on the monitor, Pierce wonders uh, where uh, Deville's jacket went. Pierce informs her that next week Deville gives one on one with Rousey. I don't know why anyone would tune in for that. Anyway, New Day and Los Aperios have a decent enough match. New Day enters on the ATVs, and uh, they are a big, they are a new uh, birthday present for Big E. From Kofi Kingston, Los Leferios do the kiss cam before the match. Big E beats down Humberto, nails him with forearms, lands Humberto on a near fall. Kingston then ends up on the apron, but Angel causes a distraction. Humberto takes advantage and knocks Kingston off the apron. Leferios then knock Big E off the apron and send Kingston into the side of the ring. Uh, back from the break, the heels are firmly in control. Humberto. Slows the pace down with a chin lock. Kingston then fights back and hits a double foot stomp on Angel. Uh, Big E then gets a hot tag and catches Humberto with a belly to belly suplex and follows up with a splash and uh, set up for a big ending. Humberto escapes the super kick. Kingston then goes for the SOS, but Angel. Sends him to the floor. He follows up with a dive to the outside. Angel then approaches uh, the ATV, but Kingston cuts him off. Big E then gives Humberto belly-to-belly -belly suplex on the floor. Kingston then goes for the springboard clothesline and then um, manages to hit a super kick. Big E then teases, hitting Humberto. With an ATV, which distracts Angel, Kingston then takes advantage and attacks Angel uh, on the next day and then hits the Midnight Hour for the win. Uh, in the back, Seamus and Ridge Holland speaks to New Day af after the issue with the ATV. Seamus challenges them to a match, but New Day laughs and drives off. Uh, in the back, uh, Sam Roberts interviews the Usos. Noted that they'd be part of the contract signing in Reigns and Lesnar. Uh, later than the Usos mentioned that Lesnar and Reigns is the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. Not, not sure I agree with that, but they have to make a big deal. Usos mocked the Viking Raiders. Suddenly, Viking Raiders ran in and attacked the Usos, demanding a title shot. They recapped Natalya, defeating Ali a few weeks ago, and Zia Lee making the save. Zia Lee defeats Natalia in 359. Um, Lee and Natalia have a decent enough match. Fans don't care because, honestly, at this point, Natalia's been around for 15 years. Why would fans care about Natalia? They haven't done enough with Lee on the main roster to get anywhere. 
um, as far as getting her really over, so that's that's a mess. Uh, they show Shayna Baszler, Aaliyah, Andrew Gulak, and Mansoor watching the match on the monitor. Lee into the corner, but lands on the second turnbuckle. Lee avoids Natalia and catches her with a drop kick. Natalia uh, slows the match down with an abdominal stretch. Lee then works over Natalia's leg. Natalia fights back and goes for the sharpshooter. Lee gets a spinning heel kick for the win. They recap Sami, Sami Zayn winning the Intercontinental title, and then he celebrates. Um fine segment if you're into goofy junk if you actually care about championship meaning something probably not anyway they set up the ring with a red carpet zane promises to give nakamura a rematch but uh he shattered his leg he la he laughed zane notes that he's willing to take on then there's a johnny chant that ultimately is kind of flat i mean why do we really care about a, a celebrity who doesn't really have any long-term impact i i get they're trying to make wrestlemania big but at the same time are you really trying to make it that big for a reason that is you know kind of a big deal anyway uh, Knoxville notes that Zane crashed in the set of his TV show or movie or whatever the heck he's doing. Then Knoxville notes Zane said he's willing to take on any challengers. He challenged Zane to a match. Zane rejected the challenge, telling Knoxville he doesn't belong in WWE. I agree. Uh, Knoxville mocks Zane and said he's got no guts. Fans break into a words chant. Zane then pretends. To leave the ring, but jumps Knoxville instead. Zane then beats down Knoxville and hits a Huluva kick twice. The fans erupted into boos as Zane posted at the end of the segment. Uh, in the back, Zane apologized to Adam Pierce for attacking Knoxville, but said he wa it wasn't his fault. Ricochet approached and challenged Zane to a match. Zane turned him down, but Pierce liked the idea and made the match official. Sasha Banks defeats Shotzi 213. Poor Shotzi. Why even have her get dressed, or either of these people get dressed for this? Uh, Naomi joins on commentary. Banks has the early advantage, but Shotzi quickly takes over. She slows the pace of the match down, but Banks fights back. Hits a meteor off the second turnbuckle to regain control. Shotzi then goes to the knees and lifts Banks in the air. Banks comes down. She hits a code break, which follows up with a bank statement for the win. After the match, Naomi jumps in the ring and posed next to Bank. Naomi decided that the fans are Tag Team Champions Banks and Naomi celebrate and end the segment. In the back, Happy Cor Corbin and Madcap Moss discuss uh, Drew McIntyre versus Moss at the Elimination Chamber. They show Moss landing on his head, scary looking spot, and Corbin decides uh, Drew McIntyre defeated Madcap Moss with Happy Corbin. Um, they have a I guess good enough match, although why waste Drew McIntyre in this? Uh, ring announcer introduces Corbin as undefeated Happy Corbin. Uh, before the match, Corbin asks McIntyre if he's certain he wanted to lose in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Corbin praises Moss and told him to get on the apron. Uh, Corbin then tells Moss to take the match instead. Moss reluctantly agrees, and the uh, heels jump McIntyre. McIntyre recovers, hits the Alabama Slam, but Moss grabs the ropes, or goes to hit the Alabama Slam, but Moss grabs the ropes. Back from the break, Moss is firmly in control after sending McIntyre into the barricade. McIntyre fights back and trades rights with Moss in the middle of the ring. McIntyre rocks Moss with a clothesline and follows up with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. McIntyre then sets up the Claymore kick, but Corbin causes a distraction. Moss takes advantage and pokes McIntyre in the eye and sends McIntyre into the ring post and hits DDT for a near fall. Moss is frustrated and gets to the ropes. McIntyre hits the Claymore kick out of nowhere and gets the win. Universal champ Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar do a contract signing, and this is how they close the show. I hate show closing angles in the sense that unless it's like right before a pay-per-view, it's a waste of time, and they, and they show it. Uh, fans are into the segment from the start, though, so I guess the segment makes sense. I just don't like the placing of it. Uh, Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and the Usos get in the ring for contract signing. Adam Pearce is already in the ring, and then the fans acknowledge that this is the biggest match of WrestleMania history. I don't agree with this. Heyman says it's bigger than Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. No. Steve Austin and The Rock? No. And the night that ended the Undertaker streak? No. Heyman even gives credit to Lesnar for helping end the Undertaker streak. Heyman then notes that security in the ring to protect Lesnar from Reigns. Heyman then adds that 
this is called a cliffhanger, and they immediately cut to a commercial, uh, and then back from the break, McCaffrey announced that Vince McMahon is in his next guest on the Pat McCaffrey Show. McMahon's going to be in studio for the interview. Fans pop for this. Uh, Brock Lesnar makes his way to the ring. Fans break into a loud chant, Suplex City. Then Lesnar said the only thing to keep him from kicking Reigns' tail is Lesnar. Lesnar demands Reigns sign the contract so he could kick their tail at WrestleMania. Heyman then notes that Lesnar wouldn't be champion and because he'll lose at the MSG house show on March 5th. I don't think so. Reigns then takes the mic and jumps to his feet. He notes that SmackDown is his show. He said that everyone works for him. He looked in the camera and said the cameraman works for him. Reigns then jumps out of the ring and said McCaffrey and Cole work for him as well. WrestleMania sign belongs to him. He had security works for him too. Security surrounds. Lesnar continues to beat down... Uh, in the ring, he destroys the table and uses it on security. Lesnar gives F5 to a guard. Lesnar has a stare down with Reigns, and they end SmackDown. Um, I mean, a month out of WrestleMania, do they really need to do the contract signing here? Probably not. But what do they care? It's just content for the sake of content at this point. I have to admit, WrestleMania 38, probably the biggest WrestleMania in the last eight years. Um, and other than that, the retirement of Shawn Michaels before that. But still, it's flat. It's really, really flat. Anyway, we'll be back.